Hello, everyone. We've got Robin on the show today. Robin is going to talk about all things pop-ups, which has seemed to be one of her main sales outlets throughout this winter season as she's selling her winter force tulips. Robin, I'd love to turn it over to you for you to tell everyone a little bit about yourself, where you're located, and why you started flower farming. Well, thank you, Jesse. I'm so happy to be here. I am in central Massachusetts in a little town called West Brookfield, which is about halfway between Worcester and Northampton, sort of about, about equidistant from Boston and Hartford as well. So they're kind of not really a major urban area. We're probably about an hour to a major urban area. I've been growing every like growing flowers and veggies my whole life. My, my grandparents were gardeners. My dad's parents, I used to go up there when I was a kid and see my grandfather would plant pansies and save the seeds and he would plant them in six packs and bring them to his office and sell them. And my grandmother always had flowers on the table. It's sort of one of these things you part of their life and then you become an adult and you're like, huh, I think I'd like to have some flowers. And then I would try to buy them and, and be whoa, that's like, I don't want to spend that much money on flowers. So I started to grow them myself. And a few years ago, I was buying tulips for my yard. I had the opposite problem of a lot of home gardeners don't ever want to cut their flowers because they're like, oh, they look so pretty. Like, I don't want to cut them. And I, w I want to cut everything. Everything I see outside, I'm, I cut it and bring it in. And then I thought, I need to grow more and start selling these because I want to cut them all. And I know everyone else likes them too. So and I thought, I'm going to get like a thousand tulips. Wow. I'm going to plant them. And I, and I had these really big raised beds that are cement blocks, 20 inches high by like three feet by like 18 feet. I'm going to fill a whole bed with tulips and I'm going to try to sell them for Mother's Day. Like, this is my great plan to make money. I just had really, really good luck. I picked good tulips. I picked some impression series, the nice tall ones. And so I sold them all like in two days. I just texted everybody I knew. Anyone have flowers for Mother's Day? Flowers for Mother's Day? And they loved them. And I was like, this, I got to keep doing this. This is so fun and joyful and spreading this beauty. And I am probably this, well, maybe not the smallest. We have a carriage house, driveway, all of it is about two thirds of an acre. And I think I calculated it out and I think I'm a, I'm growing at about one sixteenth of an acre in total. Very small. But the tulips you can grow, you don't need a lot of space because especially the indoor ones, you can grow a thousand tulips at a time in the space of a six foot by three foot table. And the turnaround is quick too. So you can you can get a lot done in a little space uh, without waiting six months for it to bloom. So this is why someone who, even though is growing on a smaller scale, can still mm -hmm. pump out so many blooms. And right. I guess, Robin, just to give people context for how many tulips you had to sell this winter season, how many mm -hmm. did you end up forcing? I ended up forcing, I ended up purchasing about 7,000. I ended up tossing maybe 1,500 because of improper storage, which was absolutely my uh, issue. It's easily so, over like 5,000, like 5,500. Oh, yeah. Easy peasy. Right? So, yeah. Yeah. So, so mm -hmm. that's a lot because you're doing this over like what, what month did you start getting tulips? I started getting them to sell in uh, mid-December. And so I sold quite a few before Christmas and I've sold most of what I've grown. I do, do I do, do give away a lot, um, mostly to people that that I just think could use them or I'll bring them to like my my work and give them to some people. And then I started selling them at work, you know, bring a bucket. It's good PR to give out your flowers. It absolutely is. And I feel like we're already diving right into the topic. So before mm -hmm. we dive deep into pop-ups, what would typically be your sales outlets without a pop-up? Yeah, not so much, Jesse. That's why I do them. <laughs> um, you know, I it's mostly been retail through porch pickups on because I have a covered porch that's north facing so even in the summer that works for for tulips and other flowers I would get just text or Facebook messages like on every single not on every single post because I don't want them all salesy but I put like for all inquiries like 508 <laughs> Fine. There's my number out right there for everybody a lot of people still like want to send me ask me for an email but I am the worst this is with the AD, ADHD I have 1200 unread emails in my inbox every day of my life i'll never get to them so t for me to I, I would literally get a knot in my stomach if i had to be checking my email all day long i gotta give this order so that the phone is more immediate and i can be more responsive and i literally will get an order and then say hey siri remind me monday morning at 10 a.m to wrap up tulips for jesse and this is how i do it it's voice on my phone and text because if i have to sit and type 
or go to another step, that's where the way my brain is, I get a little derailed. So this is why I wanted to have you on the show because I think mm -hmm. what you're doing is going to be very relatable for mm -hmm. a bunch of people out there who are either not tech savvy, mm -hmm. don't want to deal with email or haven't had mm -hmm. the ability to put up a website or just doesn't mm -hmm. have the infrastructure to do things, we'll call it mm -hmm. the traditional way. And from what I understand, you've really been able to make it work. I mean, you've moved over 5,000 tulips over mm -hmm. this season and you seem to be pretty successful last mm -hmm. season too. So let's, let's dive into pop-ups. You started getting into to this. Mm -hmm. Why do you love pop-ups so much? It's just a simple way to like, I, I can see the flowers I have coming. Right. And I'm like, Oh, I got, I'm gonna have like five trays ready this weekend. And so I'll just call one of my pop-up people and be like, can I come? Can I come? And they're usually pretty accommodating. The hardest thing is just getting over your fear of being like, I don't want to ask somebody to like, what if they say no? What like, what if, what if, what if, what if? Well, just call them and ask them. The worst thing they can say is like, no, we have no interest. You're like, all right, bye. Let me try somebody else. But we have a, far a local farmer here named Farmer Matt. He raises his own uh, meat. And I was looking for some hay or straw to cover my beds in the fall. I was talking to him on the phone. I said, I need to, you know, are they organic? He said, yo, yeah, we don't use pesticides on the on the grass. And I said, hey, you know, I grow flowers. Like, would you ever, before I even got the sentence out of my mouth, he was like, yeah, you should come up here. Because he has a, like a little barn on this beautiful property. He sells his farm-raised meats and other local products that are, that are expensive, you know? So his customers clearly appreciate the value of a local product and they want to support local agriculture. So he wanted me to come. I, I came right before Mother's Day. This was last year. And I was like all excited. I, I, I got myself a square, a little square card reader, card reader that was, I could get it for free from Square, but they get a fee when I use it. Again, I was like, ah, my biggest problem is I'm going to lose it. I'm going to lose that little square. What am I, what if I lose it? What if I lose it? But so, so I actually have a vest that I wear to every pop-up okay it's my little vest actually, I actually have two there's a puffy one in the winter and in this in the summer it's a lighter one it has like one pocket on the right like from a phone one pocket on the left I think I keep my keys and then it has inside pockets square in one cash in the other so I don't have to worry about putting something down where am I leaving it where am I dropping it because the story of my life is where'd I put it where is it where'd I put it and I and that square lives in the vest. I know you're still in the middle of doing more pop-ups mm -hmm. for the rest of the season, but how many pop-ups have you done so far this season? This, since January, I've done 11. I did one, two, three, four, five in January. I'm looking at my list. Five in January, four, four in February, and three in March. And I have wow. one this coming Saturday. I mean, that's practically one a week almost, right? Yeah, but one of the best things for me has been our little town, 3,600 people-ish, has an indoor winter farmer's market. And it is fantastic because it's Wednesday afternoons and they'll let me come as a guest vendor as like a pop, as a pop-up. I came once and everybody was so, and they were so happy. I mean, like, hello, you people walk in in January and they're like, oh, oh my God, those are gorgeous. And I'm like, I grow them in my basement. What? You do what? I'm like, yeah, you got to get some. It's so wonderful. It helps with seasonal depression. And the farmer's market is is so welcoming and they put me right in the right in the when you open the door on the first table because it's just it's a beautiful way to enter the space you know so i went to one and they said can you come back every week and i and i thought mm, i got a full-time job it's wednesday afternoons but i managed to work I've got a pretty flexible other job. So I managed every other week. You've got the farmer's market or indoor mm -hmm. one as Correct. one pop-up outlet. And how many other businesses do you work with for your other pop-ups? I have three other businesses. One is another uh, a really specialty upscale coffee shop in our town. It's very small. It's a woman, Joy Hinton, runs it. She roasts coffee beans from all over the world. It's called the Joy of Beans. She's only open Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You know, the coffee is expensive, but it's so good. And she's just got a cool vibe. And I asked her if, she, if I could come. And she's like, sure, come on. And the first time I showed up there, I was like a couple minutes late and I was panting. Oh, I'm so sorry. And she's like, calm down. Like, we're all chill here. Like, relax. And so I, I love spending the day there. Were and you a, a regular patron of that coffee shop before? I wouldn't go like sit for hours, like, but I would buy my, I would buy coffee beans from her. And she opened this, she opened the shop a year ago. And I went in with my, hey, I have flowers. Here are some free flowers. Welcome to town. So she remembered me from that. 
And next to her is a little art gallery. And my friend Rebecca owns the West Brookfield Art and Frame Gallery. And she would buy flowers for me. And I think she and Joy were friends. So they would, you know, occasionally talk about how great my flowers were. And they were both very supportive. So far, no one's asked for any kind of financial cut because I sit there with them the whole time. It's not like I'm I'm not expecting them to sell them. The other business, which which is probably the most lucrative one for me, is a it's a bigger coffee shop in Sturbridge called Sawdust. It's a coffee house and dessert bar. And it's one of these big bustling places. There's just people in and out, in and out, in and out. I had a friend in my other job who was also a, a entrepreneur. She had mentioned that this coffee shop lets local vendors in. So I started following them, went in, gave them a bunch of flowers, you know, called a couple of weeks later. Hey, you remember the flowers? Do you ever, my friend Jenny said, you can, you do vendors. And he's like, yeah, yeah, sure. Come on by. So I've, I went there twice in January and I went there on Valentine's Day. I actually had a double double header on Valentine's Day. I had the coffee shop in the morning and then the farmer's market in the afternoon. I think if you just are nice to people and make it as easy for them as possible, they'll let you come. Like if you come and, you, and you're like, can I have a better table? Like if you make their job a pain, it, they're not going to want you back. So just show up, be nice, be self-sufficient. And people are just generally nice i think so and who doesn't love flowers come on so you said there was a third business so you have two coffee shops so far two coffee the shops the farmer's market and the other one was the farmer farmer matt with the with the meat with the specialty meats last fall i went with him and i sold i had amaryllis bulbs potted amaryllis and i bought a lot of bulbs to plant in the field and i think i'm going to go back there again because it was one of those moments where i thought oh god i got all these bulbs i'm never going to be able to plant them like i want to sell them i could sell them on the website oh i don't have a website what am i going to do if i remember can i come up and, and he's like sure come on up so i set up a table and i, ba I had bagged up bulbs just in paper lunch bags with a sticker that said what it was one thing i did to keep things simple for me again with my wackadoodle brain Everything I sell at the farmer's market, with the exception of Valentine's Day, I did a bigger bouquet. It's $20. All the bulbs were $20. Some of, they didn't all have the same quantity. So I was back and forth with, with selling the bulbs. Like if it's a more expensive bulb, like La Belle Epoque, I would put 10 bulbs in the bag for $20. If it was something less expensive, I don't know, Akebono, I would put 15 bulbs in the bag. But the value of the bag was the same. I know that's a little unusual when you see online that everything's like comes in 10 or 12. But for me and my own ability to manage it i wanted everything on my table to be twenty dollars for your mm -hmm. bouquets that you sell at the pop-ups are you also mm -hmm. selling them at a singular price point and what is that twenty dollars is what i do i do eight stem tulips i have not done a pop-up with other bouquets than tulips because the only pop-ups i did last year were tulips in may and then the other ones i did um the bagged bulbs and i did potted amaryllis and those were $40. But I had been promoting them on my Facebook page. I got some traction from a few people in town. Um, and I've realized that most of the followers of my Facebook page are local. I think it's pretty common that your customers are on Facebook and your fans are on Instagram. When I mention my pop-ups on Facebook, I do people tell me they saw it. And I ask them, I mean, if you're at a pop-up and someone finds you like, hey, did you know about this ahead of time? Or are you just walking in? And just so you can get a feel for who has seen what you post. And I've definitely had people at these pop-ups show up to the coffee shop, show up to the farmer, show up to the farmer's market just to get my stuff. So I feel like I've earned my keep a little bit. So you're also helping drive the extra traffic, which is awesome. Right. Outside of posting on your Facebook page, do you do any other kind of marketing or it's really just focused on your Facebook? Facebook page. I really don't. I'm sure I could. One of my issues last time when I did a pop up for Valentine's Day, so this was the weekend mm -hmm. before Valentine's Day, was I actually ran an ad on Facebook, a local ad, and it got okay. a lot of interest. And the problem was I didn't know how many of those people who said they were interested were actually going to come into the shop. How do you know how much to bring to a pop up? <laughs> you usually sell out. Are you coming back home with buckets? <laughs> that is like, the, a million dollar question, really. To even back up more, like I said, the reason I started doing pop-ups is because I'm like, oh my God, I got all these tulips. I got to sell them somewhere. So the first few, I just brought everything I had. And this first market I did last May at the farmer at Farmer Matt's, I think I had 12 bouquets total. I sold nine. So I was excited about that. I knew I, I get maybe mm, 
two or three inquiries a week from just the people like, hey, can I get a bouquet wrapped up for a porch pickup? And I also have a couple of customers who are regular. I have another wonderful customer who I do two deliveries for every month that are a couple of bouquets. So I know I got I to gotta save some for those orders. Other than keeping back, maybe I'll keep back 10 bouquets worth if I have them to keep. And everything else I just I bring with me. I'm kind of a hustler. Like yesterday, I was at the coffee house in Sturbridge. I had 37 bouquets. It was the most I've ever had. I was like, all right, let's go, let's go. So I stayed there an hour later than I was supposed to. And then while I was there, I was like texting my friend at the Joy of Means, please, 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 can I come tomorrow? She was like, yes. And I'm like, great. So I posted all over that I was going to be there. So, and there was like zero prep because I literally brought the buckets in into my cooler next morning brought them down the road. And then I had a play rehearsal. You bet I brought those buckets with me to play rehearsal. I'm like, hey, so I have my friends at my rehearsal buying them. Like a little tip for anyone selling flowers, put a Venmo sticker on every bucket you have because everyone looks at them and like, do you have, oh, you have Venmo, ding, and they, and it's done. If it's, if the weather is cold, I will just keep buckets of flowers in my car. And like, where I go, I'm like, who wants flowers? You want flowers? You want flowers? That is definitely, like for someone who doesn't have a dedicated sales outlet, isn't mm -hmm. using technology, you really move a lot of flowers. <laughs> and now I understand, it's because you really put in the effort to do it. But I think it's also yeah. you getting over yourself, bringing the flowers right. with you every week and kind of being a walking billboard for flowers. I am. I mean, I've had every once in a while, I think, oh, God, I got to I got to turn it down. But I brought the flowers to my play rehearsals a couple of times. And then, you know, maybe two people bought them, three people bought them. And then last week, someone's like, why are you bringing flowers anymore? I wanted to get some today. I'm like, all right, I'll bring them back. And it's not like I'm like, buy them, buy them, but they're there. And I'll go, I have flowers. I have flowers. And that's it. That's the extent of my marketing at my play rehearsal. It's like the bucket and the yelling. <laughs> my full-time job, they're supportive. I just texted a bunch of my coworkers last night, Easter flowers, who wants Easter flowers? So I know I've got some people that are picking them up this Thursday. And I asked them all ahead of time. I said, are you okay if I text you about this? I don't want to, if it's going to annoy you, I won't do it. This is a really good example of this concept of frequency in marketing, mm -hmm. needing to blast that message out multiple mm -hmm. times. Because I feel like if you just carry your bucket of flowers around once go to play rehearsal people mm -hmm. may not buy but you do it a few more times and people start remembering oh yes robin has flowers and i right. may not need flowers today but there might be a day right. down the road where we have play rehearsal and i want flowers and robin's gonna have them right so you're kind of like right. a, just like a grocery store coming to them with better flowers than grocery stores obviously yes, but it's like yes, i like that concept it's almost like a service in some ways right even though you're obviously not going there just to give them flowers right right and one of my friends from right. play rehearsal was like oh do we do an easter centerpiece heck yeah i will bring me an easy brought me a vase i'm like i'll bring it back thursday full of flowers and that was you know a little higher price point so and i also am yep. absolutely unafraid to say no if i if i can't do it because every once in a while, someone will be like, oh, I really want this big bunch of tulips delivered to my friend like an hour away. Like, nope, I wish I could, but I know my limits and I know I'm old enough and just in my general life that I'm pretty good about boundaries and limits and understanding my own capabilities and what, what are my talents and what are my weaknesses. Nothing's going to motivate me like having a whole bunch of flowers. And I got to be like, I got to get rid of them. I do like the, the pre-orders. I, I tell people to pre-order a lot. I don't get a lot of pre-orders. I mean, you are primarily doing everything through text and messenger, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's yeah. no way for someone to go on a website and pre-order. And I Correct. think that might also sometimes be not like a issue, but like a barrier for certain people. At the same time, I feel like you're still doing a lot of business mm -hmm. on Facebook, right? But messenger. Facebook messages. That's like, I get a lot of orders through Facebook message. And honestly, I feel like if that's the way I am, like if that's my preferred method of communication, quite frankly, I don't want to read like a page long email. Some people like to write and tell you their life story, like good for them, but I have no patience for that. I'm like, what do you want? When can I bring it? There are more, there are other vendors out there who are like, tell me your story. Like they're more into that. It is not me. You are cut to just... the chase and I'm laughing because every single time we go online to try to find a blog recipe, it's like mm -hmm. I have to read someone's life story first before right. I get to right. the recipe and like, just give me the recipe, you know? Jump to yes. recipe, like the three best words on a on a on a food blog. No offense to food bloggers. I like no, no, the immediate you know, I like the immediacy. I suppose that's the best word I can think of, Jesse. The immediacy of pop ups. 
Like, I booked a couple of weddings this year, and I'm looking forward to them. Really, really looking forward to them. They're very straightforward. I think I would actually prefer the, like, oh, my God, my... I need something in three days and I'm like on it. If I have six months to plan for something, that's when I'm like, oh my God, it's six months away. What do I do? What do I plan? How long will I take? Like that, the, the planning and the prep gives me a little agita. Like I'm kind of a last minute Larry and I feel like there's a, there's a need for that kind of flowers for the last minute Larry. So if someone says, you know what, I want to, I want to elope tomorrow. I'll be like, done. I'll get, I'll get your stuff like it, without a lot of fuss and fanfare because as much as I am this way as a vendor, as a, as a business person, as the person you're buying from, like I'm kind of that customer too. Like I want it now. Like that's so I appreciate those customers that a lot of florists would be like, buzz off, baby. I don't want your Valentine's order on Valentine's day. I want it two weeks ahead. And I'm like, I'll take your order on Valentine's day. The takeaway yep. for people here, I think is even less so about that there's a group of people out there who are last minute. I'm actually in that category, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. But I think the greater takeaway is if you know you and you are a certain person, don't try to force fit yourself to other ways, especially if you haven't maximized what you're doing right now. So I think a right. lot of people might actually look at what you're doing and be like, she's crazy. She's running all around. <laughs> oh, she's I'm sure. The last minute to sell. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, it works for you. And mm -hmm. that's how I think motivates you to sell. And mm -hmm. I also feel the same way where there's no bigger motivation than seeing all of these stems about to blow open and right. saying to myself, how do I move this? Mm -hmm. Because like, I, I look at that situation and I'm like, challenge accepted. Yes, right. like, let's get on right. it. And, and I think that there are some people who are totally in that camp like that but they feel paralyzed as to what to do because everyone else is telling them, you've got to set up a system. You've got to have a website. You've got to have pre-orders. Everything's got to be deliberate. Mm -hmm. And I think that over time, as you grow a business, you are forced to think a little bit more deliberately and have mm -hmm. those systems in place. But when you're starting out, especially mm -hmm. in the first couple of years, I actually don't see there being an issue doing exactly what you're doing because mm -hmm. you're learning a lot, you're building connections mm -hmm. and you're moving the stems, which is awesome. Right. And it's only my second year. I definitely want the website for a couple of reasons. I want to be able to have a place where I can blog where people could do pre-orders, but I'm going to have a very, a very limited product category. I want to be able to sell bulbs, like hard, dry bulbs mm -hmm. via mail. Let's say that I were someone who is really interested in pop-ups. Mm -hmm. What kind of advice would you give for me in order to approach a business? What are some of the things that I should be looking for in a pop-up partner? Would you recommend that I go to a place that I frequent? Or would you personally even go to a place where you've never really been a customer, but you see potential? If you go to a place that you frequent, they would they would know you. So I don't. I think that's a good place to start but if it's a place that you don't frequent hello start frequenting it <laughs> or like this this other the larger coffee house that i did i didn't go there a lot because i have a coffee house right down the street but my daughter told me that it was a really cool place so that's when i went and i brought them flowers like just said hey here's a card here's some flowers done you hmm? walk in and you say hello i'm robin i, ha right. I have a local flower farm here's some right. flowers Here's some like, flowers. And I, like, I asked them um, look at you and say, thank you. Like why? Or no, well, I asked if the owner was there and they said, no, he's not here today. I said, all right. I said, well, I've, I've seen online that you guys occasionally have local vendors because they did and they post them. They put them on their Instagram. And so I said, I see you have vendors sometimes. I just wanted to let you know I'm here as a vendor and here's some flowers to enjoy. I'll probably reach out to the owner via email later this week. But it was just the person working behind the counter. They were a little bit like, um, okay. <laughs> but they took them. And when I did follow up, he was like, oh yeah, thanks for the flowers. Sure, come, come by. Can you come by next Sunday? I'm like, great, you know? And he said, well, all, our, all of our vendors are here. I like to have them here from 10 to, or like 10 to 3 or whatever it was. And I said, well, I can't stay that long because I got to be somewhere else. I can stay till 1.30. Oh, that'll work. Like, and I think, I think if I was 25 or something, I might be like, oh, I, I would be, I would have been afraid to say like, no, those terms don't work for me. To, to take something like that, you've got to be here from 10 to 3. It's a spot. Negotiate. You, you don't need, just because that's their way, like, 
I wish I could be there from 10 to 3, but I can be there from 10 to 1.30. Will that still work? And sometimes when you haven't done something, the like, oh my God, what if this? What if that? Like, what if he says no? Like, what if he wants this? What if they want money? The, 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 the things you imagine are far worse than the actual interaction when you have that. Sure, every once in a while, somebody's a jerk, but... Like, so what? They're going to be a jerk whether you're looking for business or not. So you might as well try to look for some business, you know? That's so awesome because I think besides just going out and approaching businesses, mm -hmm. a lot of times there's either imposter syndrome or mm -hmm. there is just, I'm afraid of someone rejecting me. And I right. think that you have to practice getting rejected to get numb to rejection. Right. And then ultimately have this fearless approach to just right. be like, I'm just going to ask because... They'll just say no. It's not like anything right. else will happen. Or you say, yeah, it's in it in your word there, a fearless approach. It doesn't mean that you actually are fearless. Part of the imposter syndrome is like you're kind of you you do have to fake it a little bit. Like, of course you're a little nervous, but so what? Do it anyway. Like do it even though you're afraid. Appear fearless, and the confidence will come after. Like the confidence comes from doing the act that you are so afraid to do. Like I think in generally in anything in life, like you're like it's getting started. And then it's about building, building relationships. I mean, I had a couple of other tips that I wrote down for pop-ups. And number one was to make it as easier for the, for the owner as possible. Like, you know, find out the hours and then say, okay, what do you need from me regarding like logistics? Do they have a table? Do they need you? Do they, they need you to bring a table? Try to suss out like the, the location, like, will you be like right in direct sun? But again, if they say, well, our vendors always go here and you'd be like, oh, that's a great spot. My flowers might be a little wilty though. Could, is there any way we could move it over there? Either yes or no, and then like move on. So you don't want to be afraid to ask for what you need, yet at the same time be like, mm, that, can I kind of table that's six inches bigger? Like the stuff that really matters, speak up about. But the rest of it, they're doing you a favor too to, to let you use their space. So parking, loading in, loading out. I mean, most of the time, the places I've been, I can pull right up. But um, this past Saturday, that coffee shop was full. And I swear to God, I made like 10 trips like across the parking lot to my car. I was like, ugh. So maybe I'm like, oh, I could have brought a little wagon. But I thought, uh, is the expense of a wagon worth it? I don't know. But just, just things to think about. Because loading in will always take longer than you think. However you think it's going to take to load in, plan like 10 extra minutes. Access to water and to trash is important, I think. And uh, basic supplies, I think you need some kind of signage. I think it's much better to have a sign like on your table. Everybody in the world who does table setups, they put a big sign like on the front of the table that's like three feet tall. Like nobody's going to see your sign if it's on the front of your table. The minute someone stands there, they can't see your sign. So I think that's a complete waste of money. Again, I know a lot of people do it. I have a sign with my business name in three QR codes, one for the Venmo link, one for my Instagram link, one for the Facebook link. And I just actually realized I've had my website set up to in, in progress for a while. And I thought I should just have the website link there because at least they can put their email in. It's a way to collect emails. So I think I haven't collected emails as efficiently as I should. And I know that will be the key to growing my business is getting is direct email marketing, which I haven't done. So I'm useless as far as telling anyone how to do that. The demographics of the of the place you're popping up. So I mentioned before that the farm stand and the two coffee shops all are pretty, they're pretty upscale. Farmer's market isn't so much upscale, but um, the people want to support local vendors. And that is, that's great. I did have on Valentine's Day, my double header. <laughs> I was preparing for that pop up. I had, oh, I don't know how many bouquets I had. I think I had like 30 maybe in total. When I was making my bouquets for the Valentine's Day and I realized it was going to be over all in one day, I got a little nervous. Like, I don't, I didn't have enough buckets to hold all of these so many bouquets. And I thought, oh, how about I do a bouquet bar? Like, let me just do that too. And so on my little sheet, on my little chalkboard, I wrote, just make your own bouquets. This, the price was the same. I do eight stems for $20. Baker's dozen, which is 13 stems for $30. So the price per stem is a little lower for the $30 bunch. And I had a handful of the $30 bouquets made up to sell. A few people did buy the $30 bouquets for Valentine's. And a lot of people did the make your own, which was really, really 
fun. And so if you are somebody who is like, what, what do I do with the bouquets? Do I make mixed punches? Do I make straight punches? Like, I don't know. Like, what, like a, 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 one of those silly roadblocks that you can have in your own mind, you can just bring them loose. I would assume that if it's one of your first pop-ups, people aren't going to be lining up out the door to get them. So you'd have enough time to greet your customer. And if they say, what do you have? You say, I'll make you a custom bouquet, eight stems. What do you want? As long you have to bring a little more equipment. You got to bring your scissors, your packing materials, like, so you got more stuff to bring like supplies, but your work ahead of time isn't as much. So that could be a balance. And I really, really liked doing that because it was, it was kind of fun for me. I'm not one who well, likes to sit around. And how did the customers like that? Because that's a totally different experience of coming to a place where I'm picking out a bouquet versus mm -hmm. you're telling me I'm, I'm custom making you mm -hmm. a bouquet. They really, really liked it. I think I had, I think I had at least three customers who, who said, Ooh, I saw that you were doing a make your own bouquet. And so they saw it and it, and it brought them in. And I, and I think I have about 650 Facebook followers. So it's not a huge audience. Um, but enough that three people came in specifically because they saw that. And it was, they really, really liked it. They, I think it felt more special to them. That's what I'm happy to listen to their story. Oh, my mom loves purple and she loves pink. So I would help them like, oh, I bet she'd like this. This one has, this one opens up really well. And the make your own, I think, suited my personality because I can be like, oh my God, she's going to love this. It's so pretty. I get so excited. And I think that... Um, my customers like that about me is my enthusiasm. So I can get them psyched and I can usually sell a 13 stem bouquet doing that more easily than an eight stem. So I'm trying to think of my next pop up this coming Saturday at the farm at Farmer Matt's. I think I'm going to do a handful of pre-made, but mostly make your own. As the season is progressing and you're doing mm -hmm. more and more pop ups, are you seeing more traffic to these pop ups now that people know that you're doing them? More people have come up to me and said, oh, I saw you were back here. Did that did that mean I sold more at the end of the day? I don't think so. But people came because they knew I was going to be there. Do you feel like you have a better handle of how many bouquets or stems you should be bringing to Farmer Matt's pop-up at this point, having done close to a dozen? Yeah, I would say I'll probably bring, I think I'll have enough to bring like 20. I don't, at a pop-up, I don't think I've sold more than 16 bouquets. And it doesn't sound like that much, but part of it is too, I'm early on in this journey. Like I'm in this for the long haul. Like I'm, this is not a fly by night thing for me. I also consider pop-ups marketing like getting my name out there. The couple of the people asked me if I did arrangements. Yes. Um, do you do weddings? Maybe. Why don't you give me a call? So it's an introduction to me. It's an introduction to my personality. If you think I would be a fit with you for a larger project and community building. I mean, hello, it's just community building. You're meeting people. I know that's not everyone's cup of tea. A lot of people are really introverted and like to have that safety of the computer. And the community building piece is really huge mm -hmm. and one that you can't put a price tag on. You said you don't sell more than 16 at a given pop-up. If you clear 15 per pop-up, that's $300. Mm -hmm. You have basically a very consistent, we'll call it sales outlet without mm -hmm. needing to commit like you would for a farmer's market. Right. And you're able to do this on a consistent basis. Like mm -hmm. I feel like you really figured out how to make winter tulips profitable for you and mm -hmm. work with the way that you work. You probably have one of the more untraditional ways of moving flowers, <laughs> but honestly, I see your way as more relatable to the majority mm -hmm. of people out there who want to get into cut flower farming and perhaps mm -hmm don't have the ability to do all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. So I, I really love that you figured out a way to to move your stems. Thank you. Yeah. I actually have some final numbers just for pop-ups alone. I have cleared total sales for for this year has been about thirty four hundred dollars. The bulb cost is a little over thirteen hundred. And I think I averaged sixty six cents a bulb. I'm not 100% sure of that cost as I haven't done the intense time studies. If my estimate for the bulb cost is correct, and that would include energy and stuff like that. And I approximated, this is super crazy for me, Jesse. I actually think I put about 85 hours into it, which amounts to like $24 an hour. So it's not like a huge amount and I want to be more profitable. I'd like to be making more per hour than that. And I do invest most of it back into the, into the business. I really appreciate the, the, the nudge I had to run some of these numbers. Again, like I'm taking a business class, but like 
knowing I have an interview with somebody, I'm like, I got to get it done. That's so, that's so funny because you, you took Lenny's course and mm -hmm. I assume there's homework with it, but that's a little yeah. bit less pressure than there's coming homework on. homework with it. And we had, we broke into like pods, accountability pods, and we all, everybody in my pod had a million things going on. So we were keeping up with it. We're sharing certain amounts of it, but not not a single one of us did every assignment and, and uh, on time. And we still are talking and we're like, what are your biggest challenges this week? It's been a cool experience. And so I, I, I need the kick in the pants sometimes to get over the things I don't like to do because that stuff can derail me with my, with the way my brain is, you know. Are you planning on scaling up next year in terms of how much you're going to grow for tulips? I am not. I'm not planning on scaling up. Um, I'm pretty comfortable this year where I was. And because I know I had some loss, I want to just be, I, my goal is to have less attrition. And I feel much more confident about my ability to sell now that I've established a couple of pop-ups. One of the bonuses I will get from getting a website is that email list. And I, uh, I was listening to the Dirt on Flowers podcast today, and she was saying she considers her pop-ups to be marketing. And when she started her email list, Mar uh, sending that email about where she was popping up, that's when people really started coming specifically for for her. I know that when I did the pop-up stem bar for Valentine's Day, mm -hmm. the local business emailed her email list. And okay. her, it, it actually drew people out. So even though mm -hmm. it was her customers, they would not have come out that day specifically to shop at okay. her store. So the flowers mm -hmm. drew them in, obviously a net benefit to me, but also a benefit to her too. Mm -hmm. Yes. And who yeah. would say no to those kind of flowers? <laughs> now, have you done other pop-ups uh, more pop like you? I see occasionally you have ones here and there, but you sell a lot of wholesale, right? I'm trying to shift more to wholesale for mm -hmm. winter tulips. I've really loved the CSA and mm -hmm. the pickup. I, I really am embracing this pre-order piece of it because mm -hmm. it just really takes a lot of stress off of that moving the stem mm -hmm. piece of it. I know I said nothing motivates me more than having mm -hmm. trays of stems sit there. I think mm -hmm. that I really stretched myself the season and grew so many that mm -hmm. even though I had pre-committed stems for a CSA, I had pre-committed wholesale orders and was pushing it through that route. Mm -hmm. I still had a lot of stems. And so I still was at that point where it was like, all right, how do I move these? And mm -hmm. I think that I always need some level of uncertainty in that area mm -hmm. to really push and motivate me. But next year, I will be expanding just slightly more, not as much as I thought I would be. And to your point, mm -hmm. my goal will also be to really minimize that attrition. Mm -hmm. And I am thinking about just working more with local businesses, whether mm -hmm. it's a pop-up or having bouquets mm -hmm. consistently there. Mm -hmm. I know that some of the Tulip Workshop participants have done really well with like local co-ops or grocery mm -hmm. stores to sell like a small number of bouquets to them on a weekly mm -hmm. basis. And that's like a very steady mm -hmm. way of moving stems too. I mean, the hardest part about pop-ups is the, is the time commitment because you've got a young child. My children are up and out, so I don't have to take care of them. Um, <laughs> the day will come. You miss it, but you kind of don't. Freedom! <laughs> my mom moved in with us a couple of years ago at the same time that my son graduated. And she was like, you thought you'd have an emptiness. Ha <laughs> ha, I'm moving back. But it's uh, it's great. It's great having her here. I have a lot of hobbies and I feel like after Easter, I'm going to like collapse and I'm hoping to take some of the summer off. It's hard to sell flowers in July because people have their own gardens here. They're not as interested in yours, but I'm going to do the basics like sunnies and um, lisianthus and like basic things that don't necessarily grow themselves for bouquets. I don't think people grow their own sunflowers for bouquets or certainly not the nice little pro cuts and stuff. So I think I'm going to, as my business grows, I think I'm going to keep the focus on the winter winter tulips and try to do the shoulder seasons. Got lilies going now that I started planting a couple of months ago that should be blooming starting in Mother's Day. It's all kind you of- You and I are very similar in that regard. Mm -hmm. So we are trying to focus on the parts of the seasons that have less competition and where there is less marketing needed for us to right. sell our flowers, right? Right. Yeah. And, you know, when you're busy all week and I'm like, oh, sweet Jesus, I got to get up at six o'clock and make bouquets for this. 
But the fact that I can, that I know it's coming, that I plan it, like I'll think, oh, I'm going to do these two weeks in a row, but I cannot deal with three Saturdays. So I'm taking that day off, like having nice relationships with these people. And honestly, the double header was kind of cool. Like the going to two places in one day, because the prep is, there's no more prep. Like you make all these buckets. I'm going to try to see if I can, bigger coffee house in Sturbridge is open. It's a coffee house slash wine and dessert bar. So they're open to like 10 p.m. So I'm just trying to, th I was going to ask if they would possibly let me come at like two someday, like two o'clock and I could do one in the morning and one in the evening. So it's a longer day, but it's less prep. You're prepping one time. Yeah. I really always enjoy your posts when you talk about efficiency and time studies, because it just makes me think about like, what am I like? How could I be doing this better? How could I save time? And just because we do it because we love it. But at some point, if you're so exhausted and it's no, it's no longer fun, then what, what's the point? Like, what's the point, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So Robin, if people mm -hmm. want to follow your journey, where can they find you? Well, they can find me on my Instagram page, which is at Blair House Blooms, all one word. And they can find me on my Facebook page, which is Blair House Blooms, three separate words. Hopefully yeah, website in the next I'll month. Say you have beautiful photos. I think you do a great job. Oh, thank you. I love so taking photographs. I love it. And my background is in art and design. I'm a trained interior designer. So, And I've, and I've had jobs in theater and making costumes, making sets, like just studying like proportion and scale. And I think one of my strengths is in... The colors I curate and the arrangements I make in the photographs. So I mean, it know. shows well, in the photographs are always gorgeous. So oh, worth thanks. calling Robin just to see the <laughs> photo, honestly. Yeah. Thank but, you, Jesse. Thank you, yeah. thank you, thank you. But thank you so much, Robin. I really appreciate your generous time on the show. 